what's happening. This is Joshua Boetsy and you're watching Sports and Icons. So a lot of you asked me to have a look at the new restructured box rec rankings for pound for pound. Now pound for pound ain't something that I particularly look at too much because all pound for pound lists, there is subjectivity and there is bias. For me, if any, if anything um, involves bias or involves anything even close to being bias, means that you're not credible, okay? Because with pound for pound, everything is subjective and people will put up the top who they like rather than who they believe is truly the number one, two, three, four, etc., etc. So here are the current top 10 pound for pound rankings. And again, very disappointed in BoxRec due to their whole restructure of how they've been doing the point system and quite clearly bias up to this point. And yes, I'm still waiting on BoxRec to get back to me as they do follow me on social media. So I'll drop them a message. Now, with the pound for pound, I'm just going to do the top 10. I ain't going through the whole damn lot of them. So top 10 currently. Sal Canelo Alvarez, number one. Two, Tyson Fury. Three, Errol Spence Jr. Four, Gennady Golovkin. Five, Deontay Wilder. Six, Terence Crawford. Seven, Manny Pacquiao. Eight, Anthony Joshua. Nine, Vasily Lomachenko. And number 10, Sergei Kovalev. Have you ever seen such pony rankings ever? Have you ever seen it? Now, hopefully, they're going through a bit of a restructure where this isn't quite up to date. This is just something where we've, we're currently seeing the rankings in the middle of what it is that they're doing. Hopefully, that's what the answer is. And if I don't see any kind of change in the next week or two, I will be letting BoxRec have it. Okay, even though that, um, I've put them on a high pedestal for a long time. Now, to have Canelo Alvarez, number one, no problems with that one. Okay, outstanding resume. Yes, he's had some buys in his career and some... Uh, dodgy uh, judging of course he has but that's not for box rec to decide box rec can only look at did you win did you lose how did you win how did you lose that's all they can really do okay their bias has to be left at the door so them having canelo as number one i don't have a problem with it now as far as tyson fury number two jonte wilder number five and anthony josh number eight pound for pound should not feature any heavyweights it should not feature any heavyweights unless you have done something truly outstanding. And when it comes to Deontay Wilder, he has not. He has fell short by a hellacious distance on all things boxing. His resume is trash. All he's been fighting is absolute trash cans. He got annihilated and quit in his last fight. So to have him as a number five pound for pound over other fighters like Josh Taylor, Naoa Inoue, and so forth. How could you possibly have... Do you want, what pound... Pound for pound is based on skill. Wilder has zero skill. Zero. Absolutely none. None. But, in my opinion, no heavyweight should be in the top 10 pound-for-pound pound rankings unless you've done something truly exceptional. You could argue that Tarson Fury has done something exceptional. He has. But heavyweight being on the pound-for-pound pound rankings defeats the whole purpose of pound-for-pound, pound, does it not? And again, to have Errol Spence Jr. as number three. So even if you took out the heavyweights, they'll be moving Errol Spence Jr. number two. Are you taking the absolute piss? Are you taking the piss? Errol Spence Jr. What's he done? Defeated Sean Porter. Arguably, that's highly debatable. But again, it's not for box rec to decide what's debatable and what isn't. But the other one is Mark Garcia, a guy who was brought up to weight divisions. Why do you get a whole mass of points for defeating somebody who was brought up a couple of weight divisions? Do you give Canelo Alvarez a crap load of points because he defeated Ame Khan by doing the same. Do you give Triple G a load of points as well for doing the same thing with Kel Brook? You shouldn't do. You shouldn't do. But Errol Spence Jr. currently has an awful resume. No, I'm, I'm being harsh. He doesn't have an awful resume. But he doesn't have the greatest of resumes. Not at all. And considering he's had 26 fights, it ain't that good. It really ain't that good. There is no Thurman on the record. There is no Danny Garcia on the record. There is no Manny Pacquiao on the record. And there certainly ain't, and probably never will be, a Terence Crawford on the resume. So, so to put Errol Spence Jr. above even Manny Pacquiao is despicable. Absolutely despicable. 
But would Errol Spence Jr. beat Manny Pacquiao? Probably. I'm not going to argue as to who would win. This is about what it is that they've done in their career. So Errol Spence Jr., number three, you're taking the absolute piss. Ahead of Triple G um, uh, Golovkin, hell to the no. Ahead of Terence Crawford, hell to the damn no. Damn no. Golovkin, number four, I'm not too sure if he's number four. He seems to have been on the slide lately. So I don't know whether or not he's a... I mean, you could probably put him in the top ten, for sure, for sure. But Wilder, come on, that is the absolute piss take. I feel like just disregarding box rate altogether for having the sheer audacity. I mean, is this an April Fool's joke that uh, you forgot to amend? Is that what it is? Deontay Wilder, a pound for pound fighter. Pound for pound shitbag, but not pound for pound fighter. Hell no. Terence Crawford, all the way down number six. Behave yourself. Three division world champion. Former undisputed world champion. Down at number six, behind all of these guys, really. The only debatable one might be Alvarez. To have Manny Pacquiao, an absolute legend, been there, done it, multi-division world champion. Even now, at the age of, what is he, what, 39, 40, whatever he is now? Still going strong. Just defeated Keith Thurman. Defeated Adrian Broner. Okay, okay, so Broner, he's not quite the same guy as what he once was. Thurman inactive, for sure. But still, he's still proving it. Manny Pacquiao is still showing he's an elite fighter and doesn't deserve a low position of a number seven behind, behind Errol Spence Jr. and Deontay Wilder. Anthony Joshua, okay, he's done magnificent in the 24 fights that he has. Magnificent, outstanding resume. But I go back to the original point. He's a heavyweight. All right. Vasil Lomachenko, number nine. 14 wins, one defeat. That one defeat was that his second professional fight or third professional fight. I've forgotten. Multi-division world champion. Skills out the door. Making other pound-for-pound -pound fighters, so-called pound-for-pound fighters like Rigondale, quit. He should be much higher than a number nine. Absolutely outrageous. And Sergey Kovalev, number 10. Do me a favour, as Frank Warren would say. Do me a favour. On what planet is Sergey Kovalev number 10? He's got four losses on his resume and a draw. And those four losses, his last loss against Canelo Alvarez, is a small guy and he got chinged. He struggled with a novice in Anthony Yard. How is... Sergey Kovalev, a number 10, ahead of a Inoue, ahead of a Josh Taylor, ahead of a Alexander Usyk, ahead of a Mikey Garcia, Arta Betbiev. And you could probably argue like a Josh Warrington and a Ramirez and a few others, Bichelt. But the thing is, he ain't a number 10. Hell no. Callum Smith should be above him. Billy Joe Saunders should be above him. There's loads of people that should be above him. Sean Porter, arguably, should be above him. Sean Porter, he's actually number 11, to be sure, right now. In fact, I'll just read you out the uh, the other ones. Um, number 11, Sean Porter. 12, Marius Bradis. So, Bradis, Bradis, number 12, ahead of 17, Usyk, where Usyk beat him. Are you taking the piss? 13, Daniel Jacobs. Daniel Jacobs... I think Daniel Jacobs is, is an exceptional fighter. In fact, I would put Daniel Jacobs in place of Kovalev, to be honest with you. Callum Smith as well, still undefeated. World champion. 15, Keith Thurman, inactive. 16, Josh Taylor, a unified champion. Alexander Usyk, former undisputed champion. Still undefeated as well. Number 18, was it four weight division champion, Mikey Garcia? 19, Arta Betbiev. 20, Noah Inoue. 21, Jordanes Ugas. 22, Josh Warrington. 23, Dimitri Bivol. 24, Jose Carlos Ramirez. And number 25, Miguel Bachelt. These rankings are pony. For pound for pound. You guys are supposed to be the source when it comes to pound for pound. And that is atrocious. Errol Spence Jr., number three, pound for pound. My left nut has more bloody chance of being fucking pound for pound than what Errol Spence Jr. has currently. Vasil Lomachenko down at number nine. 
Terence Crawford down to number six. Wilder up to number five. Fury, a heavyweight, number two. Joshua, a heavyweight, number eight. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. No problem with Canelo being number one. None whatsoever. For me, if you have Canelo, Lomachenko or Crawford in any three of those positions, I think most people worldwide would agree that those three are the top three. You could probably argue that Inoue should be up there, but they have Inoue all the way down in, in, in number 20. Inoue. Box rec, I'm really, really disappointed in you. Really, really disappointed. I said, I don't believe in pound for pound because it is subjective, but I would have thought that box rec was not subjective. Clearly they are. Drop your thoughts below, click thumbs up, subscribe. Catch you all on the next video.